Oh, Alex in Aberdeen. Oh, hello. I wasn't expecting to be on so soon. Oh, well. All right. You need another minute? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm fine. Thanks for waiting. I mainly just wanted to rant about William Lane Craig and how kind of unimpressive I find that he is and how surprised I am that people don't do better against him. I mean, it, it kind of seems like all the the relatively smart Christians on YouTube actually reference him quite a bit, and uh, I just don't understand it. Well, one thing is you, you're getting your information from YouTube. <laughs> I, uh, are, are there actually theologians that are held in higher esteem than him by apologists? By apologists? I don't know. He might, he might be at or near the pinnacle. Uh, I think Plantinga is highly thought of. Uh, yeah, but from a, he's, he's so cerebral and useless yeah. that the average person in the pew is not going to understand what Plantinga has to yeah. say. I, yeah, I think Craig is probably one of the most revered. Um, I, I'm with you. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. find his arguments or claims particularly impressive. And, uh, but I haven't seen enough debates with him. Uh, and and the, the one problem with debates is that, d depending on who you talk to, uh, who won, uh, may be a little different. Um, well, this is, uh, debating, I think, is really, it's theater, you know, when you get right down to it. It's, it's all, it's, it's style points and, and performance when you get right down to it. And I don't know of any case where a theist and an atheist have debated publicly. And usually what happens, you get the audience uh, files in and you have atheists on one side of the hall and theists on the other. And everyone pretty much goes out, uh, you know, thinking the same thing they thought and believing whatever they believed when they walked in. Uh, except usually what you get in these cases is, is you know, the theist uh, quite often correctly crowing that he won the debate simply because a lot of these folks, they're public speakers. There are, many of them are pastors. They do this for a living. And so you can get up there and sound really quite authoritative while spouting rubbish, and uh, a lot of people will flock to you and, and be impressed by you. Uh, well, but it, I, uh, you it know, definitely seems like they kind of have a, a technique where both sides pretty much just kind of shoot out their spiel and kind of ignore the other guy except a few minimal uh, side points. Uh. Yeah, you know why? Because, and, and this, is, this is not me just being funny to pick on them. A creationist can say more wrong things in 30 seconds than anybody else on the planet. And a, a, an accurate response to, that, to, that, to those statements might take 10 minutes or more. And that's mm -hmm. just to barely scratch the surface. Oh, so, that's, that definitely seems to be the case with William Lane Craig because he like just totally spews out rapid fire, flim flam man style. Yeah. This, mm -hmm. uh, there you, this, this, uh, it's that public speaking thing again. Collage of crap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and they can also just flat out lie because there's so much information. There's nobody fact checking, so they can get up there and, for example, they're talking about the historicity of Jesus. It can be, well, you know, I'm sure my opponent here is going to have lots of things to tell you about, but there's simply no way that he can overcome the fact that the Bible is the most accurately documented uh, book of all time, and we have more copies of it than we have anything else, and we have more evidence for the existence of Jesus than we have for anything else, and we have more of this and more of that and this and that and this and that, and those, these all compare, and these are accurate, and there's only this many uh, potential discrepancies with describable discrepancies, and rattle all that off. Well, what are you going to do when you get up there? Because he didn't offer any evidence. He offered nothing but a, a rapid-fire list of assertions. Mm -hmm. He didn't back any of it up. Um, it's one of the reasons why people have asked, you know, Matt, have you debated or are you interested in debate? Yeah, I'll do it. I, I have interest in that. But I have much more interest in discussion um, and, and informal debate because I'm not concerned about winning the judge's vote or even finding out whose mind was changed uh, or you know, wh who won by who changed the most minds out of there. I just want to get the information out and change or correct or improve as many minds as we can either way. Mm -hmm. um, so my, my th on the show, that one of the benefits is that the second somebody says something that's wrong, I don't have to let them continue that list of assertions of this and this and this and this. I can, bam, you're, you're on hold. No, please justify what you're saying. Uh, you can't do that in most of the debates. Yeah. Right, because a forensic debate has a formal structure. Yeah. And um, we have noticed, and we get this in email a lot, and down the years doing the television show, uh, what theists like to do is exactly what, Mike, uh, what Matt just said. They will bring this double arm load of crap 
and dump it all in front of the skeptic, and the skeptic is expected to be the one to sort through it and deal with it piece by piece by piece by piece. Well, I've and, definitely uh, been impressed with uh, Craig's blind them with bullshit flim flam man style, where he just mm-hmm. rapid fires spews out. Yeah, exactly, and he has a name, it, he has a it sentence, and then moves on. And yeah. And he and he has it uh, down to a science because he's just you know, or down to an art you might say, just because he does it for a living. I mean, this is what the man does. He has all that experience public speaking, so he's fantastic at that. And who, he can just win on the on the style points. And there um, are there are Craig devotees who've yeah. tried calling into the show. I mean, and, mm-hmm. and they'll be like, "What about you know uh, Taturian and Tacitus and and, jo- and uh, mm-hmm. Josephus and, and and rattle off a whole bunch of stuff." And, and fortunately, I I don't have to take it. Yeah, uh, I can I can actually say okay, let's let's go, let's do this yeah. point by point. Let's you right. know justify and, what you're saying. Yeah, and that's why you know, what we try to do is um, and, you know policy that you started up was you know instead of just if a theist wants to call the program or wants to email us at the TV show address, just give us your best shot. Give us the best argument you have. Tell us exactly what you believe, why you believe it. Bring your A game and leave the rest at home. Just bring, give us the one thing you know, that if you had to pare it all down, that uh, you think justifies belief in God. Just give us that. And, and I think I can say, um, almost without fail, mm. if the conversation is allowed to proceed at some point, and, and if, if it's allowed to proceed to the point where they either hang up or admit it, what they will end up admitting is that they have a faith-based position that they can't justify mm-hmm. to somebody else. They feel justified in, but they can't justify it to somebody else. Um, boy, that doesn't make for very good debate. Yeah, and those are the honest ones. Right? Yeah, I mean, we've had situations uh, like that. But Tracy and I were duking it out with a uh, woman who emailed us at one point, and uh, this lady was immediately wanting to just dump the double arm load. And I said, "No, stop. Just give us the one thing. Give us the best argument you have." And so she presented it. Right? I think her thing was near-death experiences. Okay, so I presented the you know standard refutation for the near death experience claim, and what did she do? She's like she did the usual thing of okay, well that didn't work. Here's my next thing. Yeah, and I said like, no. I told you to bring the best thing you have. Now if the best thing you have didn't work, you think the second best thing you have is going to work? No. So only if the second, third, fourth, and yeah. fifth all work, which yeah. is unlikely. So that's but yeah. Um, I'm similarly. It's, uh, it's kind of disappointing because I try, you know, expose myself to to theistic arguments, hoping that you know they'll have something that's at least thought provoking. And I'm kind of just shocked by how how really pathetic his are. I mean, he does the argument for morality, which is just one of the weakest theistic arguments, and then he just turns it into an argument from consequences midway through. I mean, just. Mm-hmm. So many examples like that. And he's in love with Kalam. Mm, yeah, yes. that was pretty much the, the conflating, because the universe in its current form had a beginning, the universe had a beginning, and it, 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 just excluding the possibility that the universe came from some sort of pre-existing Yeah, I, I, I am similarly know. unimpressed with Craig, and on the, on the subject that you mentioned, uh, or... Somebody mentioned, or maybe it was Martin, of uh, you know doing the debate and then running around claiming victory. That's even happened on this show where we had yes. an apologist on who we had an extensive, extensive. debate that most was it people two thirds of the episode. That Matt Slick one that makes yeah. everyone groan. And 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 he asks a question, uh, you know, of uh, if physical slash conceptual is not a true dichotomy, then what's the third option? And made a big deal out of the fact that I couldn't actually label a third option, uh, and then runs around claiming victory in the debate the next day uh, mm-hmm. on his forum. Meanwhile, when asked whether his God was physical or conceptual, Slick's answer was exactly the same as mine: neither. Thereby admitting that it wasn't mm-hmm. a true dichotomy. Uh, yeah. And and the answer was there all all the time in the name of the argument, which is transcendent. But yeah. Anyway, uh, is that is that all you had was to to that, that's complain pretty about? Much it. Alex, okay. or to complain about William Lane Craig? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I'd love to find some, but... Well, I mean, are there, is there anyone you can actually recommend that, like, makes kind of an interesting argument for theism, or is there just pretty much nothing out there? I'm well, not aware of anything. If there was something out there, I'd be, I'd be a theist. It, it depends on how you want to define interesting. Well, I mean, just here, at I mean. least thought-provoking, because, I mean, I'm, I, I don't really expect to be converted, but I expect to at least be challenged. Yeah, yeah well... Um, I mean, yeah, it depends on if you're defining interesting as who, who is more fun to pick through and refute. Um, 
yeah, I guess that's, so, so, you know. Maybe <laughs> so you're scratch, scratching your chins. Yeah, I've been asked before if there was you know, any particular theist that I'd recommend, or apologist that I'd recommend. I, I can't, because th every time I've gotten to the point where I thought, okay, this is the guy. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, when I was still a believer, I, I was a fan of uh, mm -hmm. Josh McDowell, particularly mm -hmm. Evidence That Demands Verdict. And then as I began to study, then it became obvious to me um, what an unscholarly buffoon Josh McDowell is, <laughs> and how his evidence um, and argument are, 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 are laughable. The, the thing is, is that they're presented um, as a preaching to the choir, preaching to the uneducated, credulous, uninterested right. in learning about reality choir. And what it does is it bolsters up their preconceptions. They, and, and I was part of that choir. I believed this. I open up evidence. Look, here is all of this evidence which justifies what I already believe. Wow, this is cool. I am justified in my beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then you trudge off down the line. And there's nothing I like more than have somebody call in who has who has had their faith bolstered by Comfort or McDowell or Strobel or Craig and to come on and pr to present their fam favorite argument only to get the wake-up call of a lifetime. Because I know when the call's done, Been not only done have that. other people benefited, mm -hmm. but that individual is going to have to go back and start rereading and starting to find, uh, wait, 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 what's the next thing? I got off, Somehow he got off script on me. I'm not even sure what happened. He didn't say mm -hmm. yes when he was supposed to. Yeah, uh, and, and by the same I don't find any of them impressive. Yeah, I've, um, I didn't have quite the fundamentalist background you had. I had more of a mainstream Christian background. You really studied it. You were, um, you were never a true Christian. Yeah, that's well. <laughs> None of us were according to them. Um, and and you know what? Depending you're on their definition, right. I agree. Actually, you know what? You're absolutely right because you're talking about you know the people that you talk to these days say they believe this, that, and the other, and you, they don't really. I honestly don't really think I ever did, even in my you know. D Church-going youth, part of the youth choir days, you know, I really don't think I ever genuinely did. Um, it was part of that, uh, and well, I mean, it was fitting in with the family and the culture situation. But, but likewise, you know, I've read popular Christian apologists, you know, guys like, you know, D. James Kennedy and people like that. You know, I, I haven't gone on to study the more, um, you know, advanced academic theologians because, quite frankly, your average rank and file Christian doesn't really know what those people have to say either and doesn't particularly care. Um, one of the uh, criticisms that was labeled, you know, leveled at Dawkins when the God Delusion came out was that, oh, well, he's theologically unsophisticated. He doesn't understand all the sophisticated theology that the sophisticated <laughs> well, theologians and academia understand. Make a and lot, it's like, but it's that was how, just such, a, how, uh, such an irrelevant uh, criticism to bring up, and P.C. Myers mocked it, I think, very well, because, look, you go to any church in America, right, and... You know, Joe and Jill Sixpack, uh, you know, sitting in the pews, right, every Sunday, they don't understand the sophisticated theology, and they don't care. They're there to get comfort. They're there to hear about Sky Daddy, who's out there looking after them when they're worried about getting their, you know, mortgage, you know, uh, you know the problems that they may be having with their jobs or this, that, or the other thing. They're just looking for a security blanket. You know, and they uh, don't yeah, really care especially about... Especially when some of the more, com the more uh, yeah. considered Elida... Uh, uh, Theologians are pretty much ones that believe in something like the the foundation of all being or God as just a really neat concept. Yeah, I know, and and, and that is not what your average rank and file Christian believes in this country. And they the, just don't the, care. And the abstruse God of the theologians just doesn't play anywhere but in the mind of the theologians. The so-called sophisticated arguments are anything but. <laughs> um, while MythBusters have demonstrated that you can in fact shine a turd. Um, that is roughly what they're attempting to do. What did they use in that? I didn't see that episode. Ah, you, you'll have to go back and you'll have to look at it. They actually up. shone a turd. Yes. Like they buffed it and polished it and did Oh, it. yes. Oh, nice. And Adam was very proud. I bet they froze it first. Um, you, know, you, watch, you have to watch the episode. In action, in, in, oh. what the point was um, that this is what they're attempting to do. It's just that uh, they don't know what they're wow. doing. Uh, what they, you know, we can, you can dress something up. You can dress Pretty up a Pretty much saying we want to believe in God, but we just don't want all the messy stuff involved with believing in God. So we're just going to say we believe in God, even if he's just a concept. They're, they're trying to dress up a pig. Yeah. And uh, while that can be amusing on occasion, um, it doesn't make it somebody you want to take to the prom. So. But, you know, it's when you read a popular apologists like 
Strobel, like, good Lord, Ray Comfort, like <laughs> uh, D. James Kennedy. And you look at these books and you look at just how transparently lame you know, the arguments are and what they think passes for arguments in these books. And um, I, honestly, like j- a juvenile level of cognition compared to what you get from, you know, uh, Dennett, Hitchens, Dawkins, you know, the rest. It's, and, and understanding that these arguments are completely bought by the target audience. You know, the, the readers of these books think it's great. Um, yeah, you're dealing with people who aren't really uh, you know, coming to the... Uh, Come to the thing with a great deal of intellectual muscle. They're they're looking for the emotional comfort in the belief. No, it's just kind of sad. I mean, I was a gratifying. fundamentalist. I pretty much became an atheist because I wanted to challenge my beliefs. And it kind of seems now, as an atheist, I still try and challenge my my beliefs and concepts, and they just aren't stepping up to the plate. That that's what happens the closer you get to being right. <laughs> mm. Thanks a lot, Alex. I appreciate the call. Yeah. Thank you for your time.